Welcome to The Peaceful Truth, the podcast where we talk about everything from women empowerment, feminism, and everything in between. You are joined by your host, Kenzie Meekbeck. Thank you guys so much for tuning back in, and thank you for coming back after I took a week off. Um, I just had one of those weeks where I was like, you know what, I just need some me time. Um, I just need to kind of take a vacation and just do whatever I wanted that week. So I just kind of felt like doing that. Um, so since I'm the only one running the podcast, I decided to sell that I have to give myself a vacation. So I let myself do that. Um, But I am so beyond happy that this past weekend was Memorial Day. It just feels like after Memorial Day, and I feel like culturally it's the same way here in the States where like after Memorial Day, it's summer. Um, And it's true, like out here before I started recording, a bunch of little kids were out screaming and running around next to the pool of the apartment I'm at. And I was just thinking, I felt like such a Scrooge because I was like, oh, these kids better like pipe down this summer like when I'm recording and I'm like, how selfish, like they're having fun and I'm an adult, but I do not need to lose sight of the fact of how a fun summer can be for kids. So they're having a blast out there. So if you hear laughter in the background, that's why. And also, I also hear my male neighbor talking on the balcony. So if you also hear that, that's why. Um, But speaking of summer, this week's episode, I wanted to talk about a summer event, an international summer event, the FIFA World Cup. But no, you say, oh, that was last year. The FIFA Men's World Cup was last year. Well, it's the 2019 Women's World Cup. And it is just around the corner from June 7th to July 7th um, this year. And what made me thought of this episode to talk about the FIFA Women's World Cup is my guy friends brought up the point that no one's talking about it. And I was like, you're right. I wonder if there's some discrimination there. Um, because like I was thinking about it and I was like, I not the biggest sports fan. Uh, I always sound so dumb when I say that, but I'm, I'm just not super into sports. And but I still know when huge things are happening. Like I'm not completely oblivious. I know when like the Olympics are happening. I like the Olympics, but like I know when the Super Bowl is happening. I know when those huge things are happening. So I hear about the FIFA Men's World Cup, but I had not heard a pi- like a peep about this. And I always remember like seeing advertisements and all my friends going out to celebrate and drink and watch. Um, It's definitely not as much as most sporting events, but I do see people getting into it and people watching on their phone. I see advertisements on TV. Then again, I know I'm more on Netflix nowadays, but like I really haven't seen a single advertisement for it. And you hear like huge celebrities promoting it. Like Shakira a few years ago had the Waka Waka song um, where she was like performing that and that got major hype and was a huge hit for the whole summer. Um, and a lot of people watched it that year. I just feel like women had it, no clue that the Women's World Cup was going on. But it's the next week pretty much in France. The last one is in, in 2015 when the U.S. team won. Um, and by the way, the U.S. is the most successful team. We've won three times. Um, by the way, this podcast is filmed in Seattle, and if you can tell by my American accent, if you listen from a different country. Um, but we've won, and we've hit the record since its foundation in 1991. So, like, the U.S. has won a lot, and they're one of the best teams for women's. Um, so I'm just surprised I haven't heard about it uh, this year. Um, so not only does it lack like culture and attitude here in the U.S. to be into women's sports, um, but FIFA 2, according uh, to an article by USA Today journalist Nancy Armour, um, is also kind of showing some signs of like, I don't know if it's dis- to like, call it straight out discrimination, but the lack of equality. Um, But, um, so here's a quote from the article. The champion of the Summers World Cup will get 4 million this year, um, double what the US women got in 2015, but that's still a fraction of the 38 million France got for winning the men's tournament last year. So men got 38 million last year and women will only get uh, 4 million this year, who, forever, whoever the winner is. Not only that, the, but they had some schedule conflicts as well. So the men's continental championships in Africa, South America, 
and North and Central American and Caribbean region um, with the gold and Copa America finals being staged at the very same day as the World Cup final um, for this uh, FIFA Women's World Cup. So it's very different. Not only that, I want to point out that the FIFA World Cup is just called the FIFA World Cup for guys and it's specified as the FIFA Women's World Cup. So there's like a connotation there at least that this is the main one. Oh, and this is the women's, I guess. Like why is it based on this is the main one because this is for the dudes also according to this article the world cup souvenirs are scarce so fifa's online store wasn't even in operation until uh until friday i guess and this article was written pretty recently two weeks before the tournament begins um stunning given that fifa never passes up on an opportunity to make money um and it also goes on to say that um previously it was the women were forced to play on turf, which was a huge outrage and was never even ever considered for men to have to do that. And women finally get to play some like on grass this year, but um, last year they had to play on turf. So I did want to talk about like the parts of the inequality with like the culture around women's sports and how it's not the main thing, not the main attraction. It's like a subpar thing to watch versus male sports. But with all of that inequality, let's just give the US team, women's team some love because we might as well highlight them um, on this platform and do some positivity. So again, to brag a little bit about my home country, the US is the most successful team and we won four years ago in 2015. According to ussoccer.com, of the 23 players named to the roster, Carly Lloyd has been the most successful, um, has had the most successful experience in the Women's World Cup, playing 18 matches while scoring seven goals, six in the 2015 tournament. So she's coming back, she's a player, she's an all-star star player, and she's one of the captains. Um, and so far, the U.S. women's team has had seven wins this year, one loss, and two draws, and 29 goals total. Um, and that's according to this past Monday evening, if you're listening this Thursday. Um, and the other captains of the team are Alex Morgan and Megan Rapinoe. Um, I can't tell if there's more than that as the captains, but those are the confirmed captains I could find on a few articles. So when I was searching though, to kind of give you more facts about the different captains of this team, I started to search Alex Morgan. And unfortunately the first thing that popped up was like a bikini shoot that she did, like as the first thing, not like Alex Morgan soccer, Alex Morgan captain of women's team. Like that's the first thing that popped up. So like, uh, like, yes, women's bodies rock and that's awesome. And not to, like, I think it's so cool that you pose for that. But like, at the same time, it's kind of bummer that she's not known for like the top thing of what she's actually accomplished for in her career. Um, but Alex Morgan became the youngest member of the U.S. women's national soccer team in 2009 and was the first overall pick in the 2011 women's professional soccer draft. At the 2012 Winter Olympic Games, Morgan won her first Olympic gold medal by helping the U.S. women defeat, defeat Japan. Three years later, she was a leader on the team that again defeated Japan to win the FIFA Women's World Cup. And that's according to biography.com. So that's the second team captain. And the third, Megan Rapinoe, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. According to Wikipedia, though, she helped win the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup. So these three captains are returning players. She also helped at the gold in 2012 and finished uh, runners up at the 2011 FIFA Women's World Cup. So in 2011, they were all for also the runners up. And since 2018, she's been co-captains alongside Carly and Alex. So of course, there's several other women that I didn't even mention that are also amazing. Um, so yeah, I hope that we keep fighting for equality and I hope that for women's sports and that it starts gaining attention, especially here in the US if we're so awesome. Like I know soccer or football, the more streamlined term of football is like 
not as popular here as in most states, but the fact that like our team is winning, winning internationally and we like aren't fully supporting that is kind of a bummer when I feel like maybe other countries would, but maybe it's the same. I'm not from other countries. Maybe it's a similar culture where no one knows that much about it. Um, but the fact that they get 4 million versus 38 million is definitely a significant difference. Um, so yeah. So what am I looking forward to this week? I am training and I got a new bike. I am training for my second century ride officially. And I am super excited and looking forward to be a part of that. Um, so I'm looking forward to training uh, for that. And yeah, that's my good thing. I want you to think about what's your good thing. What's the number one thing you were looking forward to this week? Um, and what's the top thing on your list that keeps you happy? Um, well, thank you guys so much for listening this week. I will definitely see you next week.